Hello, my name is Sherry Sloan, and I have prepared for you a tutorial to guide you through the process of writing question number 27 for the New York State English and Language Arts Regents exam. Before beginning this lesson, it would probably be a good idea to go to the following website and find the exam from August 2011. If you read the passages that are associated with questions 26 and 27, it'll help you a lot in following this video. Also, get ready to take some notes. You'd probably want to pause the video now to get these supplies together. So the first step for writing question number 27 is, of course, to read the writing prompt. This is found on page 13 of the exam. The prompt states, Choose a specific literary element, for example, theme, characterization, structure, point of view, etc., or literary technique, symbolism, irony, figurative language, etc., used by one of the authors. Using specific details from either passage 1, the memoir excerpt, or passage 2, the poem, in a well-developed paragraph, show how the author uses that element or technique to develop the passage. So that's what you're writing about. You're writing about how a literary element affects a passage. But remember, remember to focus on only one passage for this portion. So before we begin writing our paragraph, we should remind ourselves what the basic structure of a paragraph looks like. The basic structure starts off with an introductory sentence, followed by some supporting details. And finally, a nice concluding sentence. Also remember that a paragraph, a good paragraph, usually consists of around seven to nine sentences. So your next step you really want to think about is to think in your head, hmm, which literary elements and literary techniques am I most familiar with? Some common ones, some common literary elements are theme, characterization, and point of view. And some common literary techniques are symbolism, irony, figurative language, and imagery. There are, of course, hundreds of literary elements and literary techniques. But I think that if you walk into the exam knowing these ones, I think you'll be in pretty good condition. Hint, when skimming the text again, Consider which literary element or technique made the passage come alive for you as a reader. Which, which of these techniques made you understand the text, made you get what he was trying to say? I'd like to take a few moments to overview some of these literary elements and literary techniques. Firstly, theme. Theme is the overall message the author is trying to convey about humanity society, values? Is he um, talking about racism? Is he talking about giving people um, a chance? Various themes exist in literature, but what is the author trying to say to you? Next is characterization. I can't tell you how many times I see a student write, Walter Lee is an immature, money-hungry guy who makes bad decisions. Well, no. I mean, yes, he is that, but you have just given me his emotional and physical description. So you could have used the words characterize or characterizing or characterized instead of saying Walter Lee is. So that's an example of characterization. Next is point of view. Point of view is the perspective from which the story is told. You have two basic options here, either first-person point of view or third-person point of view. In first-person point of view, the narrator is part of the story. Some really good indications of that is when you see words like I, we, us, and me in the narration. Your next option is the third-person point of view. And that means that the narrator is separated from the story. So he's sort of like an observer. And you get that from words like he, she, and they in the narration. A hint about point of view, if you have used only the words point of view and have not prefaced that with either the words first person or third person, you've probably done something wrong. It almost always refers to first person point of view or third person point of view. Next, I'd like to quickly review some literary techniques. Literary techniques are often used in poetry, but not limited to poetry. The first is symbolism. 
Symbolism is when a word or object stands for another word or object. Like the color red often resembles passion. Next is irony. Irony is when a person's situation or circumstance is not as it would actually seem. In fact, usually the opposite is happening. Next is figurative language. Figurative language is language that is imprecise. It's language that does not mean exactly what it says. It forces the reader to use their imagination. For example, if I say school is a fashion show, I have used a metaphor and imprecise language to put a picture in your head. I have used imprecise language. So an other forms of figurative language involve simile and personification. Simile is a comparison of two unlike things using the words like or as to compare them. Personification is giving human qualities to non-human things. Next is imagery, which is really similar to figurative language, but it's language that creates a mental or sensory image. Usually that image comes about in the form of simile, personification, and metaphor, but really is any language that creates that mental or sensory image. The sensory image is an image that tickles one of your five senses. Did it make you see? Did it make you feel? Did it make you hear? Did it make you taste? If it did any of those things, then it has addressed your senses. So now that you review the passages and you've reviewed the literary elements and literary techniques, which literary element or technique made the passage come alive for you? Made you understand the passage better? Made you care? That's the one you should use. Again, a reminder that a paragraph consists of three basic elements. First, an introductory sentence, then supporting details, finally, a concluding sentence. Also, a paragraph usually consists of seven to nine sentences. So the first major element of our paragraph is going to be an introductory element. I like to start with an attention grabber. An attention grabber is a sort of short anecdotal sentence, a little story. I follow that up usually with an introductory sentence. In this sentence, it's great to define the literary element and then show how it develops the passage. Here's a little hint. In the directions, it doesn't tell you that the literary element has to be defined. But in the directions for the teachers that we use to grade you, it says that you need to have the literary element defined. So, piece of information, make sure you define it. Okay, here comes my attention grabber. There is a great level of personal accomplishment and pride when a person is the first member of a family to achieve academic success. In passage one, the memoir by Da Chen, the author uses first-person point of view, which portrays the narrator's personal perspective of the passage. So there you see that we have our literary element and we do have the definition of it, the narrator's personal perspective of a passage. Our next major element and most important element are the supporting details. This should be at least two to three sentences long, probably longer, including various details from the text where the literary element or technique was most effective, where it really shone in the passage, where it really mattered to the passage and the development of the passage. Here are my supporting details in blue. In lines 8 to 9, the author reveals his pride at being the first person in his school to be accepted to a university. In lines 12 to 13, the author's personal pride is evident as he conveys the promise that higher education will bring about. I would be able to take care of my wonderful family and give them all that had been denied them. His acceptance to the college would end 30 years of humiliation that his family endured as farmers. The personal perspective of the author shows that he is also apprehensive about the move. I was going to miss her, his mother, when I was thousands of miles away. Line 33. The final element is the concluding sentence, and it's also an important sentence. You need to conclude how the author's use of the technique that you mentioned really developed the passage, why it really helped the passage to make more sense to you. And here is the conclusion in red. 
The author's use of first-person point of view allows the reader to understand the author's pride and his parents' emotions. So notice here that I have mentioned my literary element again, and in a way I kind of also have the definition because you, I, I get you involved that it's part of his story and his parents, and then I get the theme in there with the author's pride. So the last sentence really sort of concludes all these elements in one sentence. Remember, follow these basic steps and you'll be on your way to a great question 27 paragraph. Remember to start with a nice attention-grabbing sentence, one that pulls you into the story. Then, follow up with an introductory sentence where you've defined your literary element and sort of talked about how it develops the passage. Next, really good supporting details. Supporting details that matter, and matter that the literary element or technique was used. Finally, the concluding sentence, and really involves concluding the idea of the theme and the literary element and how it all worked together. And that is how you write question 27. Thank you again for viewing my tutorial. My name again is Sherry Sloan, and this has been a presentation of how to complete question number 27 on the New York State ELA Regents exam. Please feel free to contact me at the email address below if you have any further questions. Thank you.